Hi again, here we are um, working with our table view in Xcode 8 and Swift 3. And in the last video, we set up the detail view controller and we set up a view controller file for it. Okay, so everything should be set here. Why don't we do this now? Let's switch back to the regular view. And what we want to do is I'm going to go to view controller. Okay, so let's switch to the view controller.swift file. Okay, and what's going to happen here is we're going to click on one of the table view cells and it will take us to the detail view. So let's give that a try first, okay? So I'll, I'll run my project and when I tap on the B cell, it takes me to my detail view. But what I really want is I want to take the name from that cell and put it into this label, okay? And I should be able to go back and click on the C cell and it takes me here, or the A cell, right? Okay? So we need to be able to pass data from this view to the other view, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to um, view controller because that's where we start. This is where all of our, our table view rows are being displayed. And this is where you're going to tap on a table view row, right? So this is where we're going to initiate the transition from one view to the next view, okay? So anytime you initiate a segue by, t you know, by, in our case, tapping on a row, right? Um, we're going to, your view, the current view controller is going to get a message um, called prepare for segue, okay? I'm going to add that to my, my view controller file here. For some reason, I always like to put this one at the bottom. So I'm going to go to the bottom of the class and I have to add it before this last curly bracket, but not inside one of these other functions. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll put a mark down here. So I made a, I made a couple lines there. So I got a good space here before this curly bracket and after that one. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll mark this as navigation, right? So this is where we know the navigation is happening, like when we navigate from one view to another. And then what we'll do is we'll type prepare for segue. So what I want to see here is prepare for segue, and then it should say UI, storyboard, segue, and sender. Okay? And so this is the method that we're going to call on. Okay? Whenever you tap on that, that table view cell, Okay, when it when storyboard executes the segue, it's going to send us this message. Okay, so so when we get this message, we get a segue object, and this segue, the variable segue right here, is a UI storyboard segue object, and that object, actually, let's go back here, that object is the segue right here, right? So this is this is what we're getting. We're getting one of these guys, but and we're getting all of the properties associated with it. And if you remember, we clicked on this earlier in a previous video and we gave it an identifier, okay? So this, these um, storyboard segue objects, they have all of these properties and some more properties. The property one, that we're going to look for is the, the, um, the identifier property, okay? So that way every, every segue can have a name associated with it so we know which segue is being executed, okay? So we'll, I'm going to copy that name to make sure I don't misspell it. So I'll, I'll select it and command C. And then I'm going to switch back to view controller. Okay. Let me clear those extra things out of the way here. And what we're going to do is we're going to look for prepare for segue again. And we're going to type in if segue.identifier equals... You want the double equal here because we're doing a comparison, right? So we're going to compare the value of, of segue.identifier to, and I'm going to paste the name of the segue that I created, okay? So I'll paste the name. It was two details segue, okay? So if, if the identifier of this segue is this name, then we know that that's the segue that was executed, okay? So we need to do a couple things. Um, I need to get the row that we that was selected and then get the um, the name associated with that row so the row will have an index right a, a row index right and then that will associate with one of the values in our array and then we need to get a reference to the destination view controller and for us the destination view controller is going to be the details view okay so let's do that first let's get um, the index path for the selected row. 
So I'll type in let index path equal table view dot um, index path for selected row. Okay. Now there's another one in here that's index path for or index paths for visible rows, index paths for selected rows. So this one gives you an array of, of all the multiple potentially selected rows, right? This one right here, you know, index path for selected row only gives you one, you know, one selected row, right? So and that's all we want really because you're just going to tap on one row to go to the next, next scene, right? So we'll get that. Now, one thing happens here is this selected row is an optional, so it might exist, it might not exist. I'm pretty sure it's going to exist because, you know, the only way to execute that segue is to select a row, but we can check it. So why don't we do that? Um, I'm going to type if let index path equal table view for selected row, and then I'll put the curly brace here at the end and hit return. And so what's going to happen is we'll check this, the path for selected row and if it's not nil we'll put it in this variable and then move on into the if statement and if this does come up with nil for some reason we'll just skip over this and uh, not do any of the code in here okay so there's our index path for selected row now we need to get our destination view controller okay so what we'll do is we'll say um, let I'm gonna just say destination VC equal segue dot destination right and this will be the view controller that we're heading to okay and if I option click on it you can see it tells me that it's a UI view controller okay but what we want to do is we want to we want to cast this as the details view controller so I'm going to type in as exclamation point details view controller okay and when I do that if I option click on destination VC right here you can see that it says type is details view controller and that's exactly what we want okay okay so now we got to do one more thing okay destination view controller needs to have some variable or some place where we can deposit the name here that we want to pass on that it should display in its label Okay, so we need to be able to pass the va one of the values here over to our destination view controller, and it has to have a place to store that. Okay, so we're going to have to switch to destination view controller for a moment here, right? So I'm going to do that. I'll go over to the, to the outline view and find destination view controller. And at the very top here, let's actually put some marks in here. I'll say mark, just like I did on the last one. IB outlets right and then why don't we do this one here we'll say mark uh, colon uh, view life cycle and then at the very top here after the class definition but before any of the other methods we'll say var um, title uh, let's say um, Let's do, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a good name. Let's do title text. Okay, we can't use the name title because that actually is a property that belongs to a view controller. So we need to make a new name that isn't the same, right? So let's say title text, right? And it will be type string. And it's possible that maybe we could get to this view controller without setting the title. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare the title string as an optional value. Okay, right, so we're going to set this from outside, and then it'll be an optional value, right? So if we didn't set it, it'll, you know, it won't have been set, and that's okay if we make it an optional, right? Okay, so now if we wanted to display the title text, what we need to do is we need to, um, to check and see if it's there when this view shows up. Right, so whenever this view is about to be displayed, we're going to check and see if this optional value has a value, and it's not nil. And if it if it if it does have a value, we're going to assign that value to the to the title label. Okay, so here's our mark for view lifecycle, and there's another method here. The view view did load is one of the lifecycle methods. There's another one called um, view will appear. Okay, and view will appear. Um, is called right before a view is about to be displayed. Okay, we should type in super dot 
view will appear. And then we need to pass this animated variable in here. So we'll type in animated. Okay. Okay. So now when the view will appear, we're going to check to see if the title text is has a value, right? Because remember, it's an optional, right? So we'll say if uh, let title label or title, wait, ooh, we're going to do title text here equals title text. And so if the title text has a value, we're going to assign that to this variable. And then what we'll do is we'll say, hey, you know, if you have a value, if it, if it doesn't have a value, we'll just skip over this and go to here, right? If it does have a value, we'll say title label, which is a UI label dot text equals title text. Oops, uh, let me, yeah, there we go, right? Okay, so now our detail view can display the value that we deposit here, okay? Right before it, it, it appears on the screen, it'll check to see if this thing has a value by doing this, and if it does have a value, we'll take the, the, the value that we found and put it into the text property of the label, okay? So now let's go back to view controller and here, where we have this destination view controller there, right, where we've got our destination view controller, what we'll do is we'll say destination view controller dot title text equals array bracket. And remember, we've got the index path right here, and that'll tell us which row was selected. So just like we did in cell for row at index path, we can say index path dot row. Okay, so this will be the uh, the row number, and we'll get the item that's at in the array at that row number, and then pass it on to the destination view. Okay, so anyway, let's give it a quick test. So I'll click run. <clears throat> and... Uh, and there's our, our app there. And if I click on A, you can see the A's appear here. And if I go back and click on B, then the B's appear. And if I click on C, then the C's appear, right? So anyway, so that's pretty good. Pat yourself on the back. And uh, thanks for watching. And we'll continue this and add some more features in the next couple videos, okay?